we talk about something very good, uh, which is a uh, called Gobert N. Gobert N allows us to send a bunch of packets out, and after you send out a bunch of packets, you can uh, selectively uh, think that, ah, oh, this is a, a thing that already lost, okay? So I will pretend that I never received anything good to pretend, okay? Why? Because it's just a, a out of order packets, but I don't like out of order. Okay, so if you expect number three, but you receive number four, you will say that, yeah, this is a bad guy, okay, I don't want it. Okay, I don't want it, then I will reply you with an ACK2, which is an ACK just received, no, just sent before, okay, just sent before, and repeat it. While I repeat it, this guy has become a poor guy, okay. The sequence number four data will be deleted forever. Okay, so this is the cooperation. The receiver will discard anything out of order, and how about the sender? The sender will compensate those you already give up. So what is the meaning? I never promised you I will keep number four. So I will tell you that, hey, I only received up to number two. Please send me number three onwards, okay? So the score goes on. The story goes on if, uh, I send out one and two, and one and two being received, I mean ACK. Then the data five and six will be fired out at the same time, yet they are poor victim. Why they are poor victim? Because they will be discarded eventually, because they, because they are being considered sub order. Okay, so being discarded on the rece uh, receiver side. Now the receiver will wait for the number three to come back. So after the timeout, it will compensate number three all the way up to the window size four, okay? All the way send back the four packets. So that's why we call this protocol go back in, right? And go back to the four slots, okay? I go back four slots and we transmit this four slot back to the receiver, okay? And the receiver eventually will receive it and, and move the windows onwards, okay? Now this is a go back end. So is it good? Kind of, okay? Now, first of all, if you talk about go back and one problem is very worth mentioning is why n or why n equal to something, okay? So the n itself is very important. It's control how big the trap is or what is the probability that you will eventually uh, um, trigger the go back functions, for example, a trigger full back function, because one of it is lost, I need to compensate the whole bunch of things together. So you will find that by the previous illustration, and going to be big is not a good solution, right? Eventually, I, I just lost one of it. My price to pay or my penalty is to retransmit the whole window thing, whole window of thing. This is my, my Penalty. So the end is not going to be big, okay? And it is also the same idea when people implement TCP. People implement TCP, the window starts with a very small number, okay? And in this go back end control, okay, which, which is a very, uh, I mean, uh, for educational purpose, I would say, okay? So you will miss some uh, very attractive idea, like, uh, hey, how about I grow the number? No, there's no growing. How about, oh, I think that n is, uh, n is full, it's too much. Can I reduce n equal to one? No, there's no any adjustment there, okay? Plus, we will limit to a small size, not just because of the penalty that I need to pay after ever have a retransmission. Is the probability that you will have a, I mean, a, how can I describe to you? Okay, here. The probability that uh, I will be uh, blind here without any conscious generate congestion. How can it be possible? Yeah, very possible, right? Let's say every computer in this world using go back N, and the N is one gigabyte. Okay, and the N is one gigabyte. So there is one. That means your network card is a dummy device, right? The network card don't know about the, 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 the uh, situation out there, situation in the network. So it will immediately push one gigabyte of data 
eight in the network, believe that that one gigabyte of uh, data will deliver, so happen no. You will generate congestion, right? And you see the previous uh, figure before, whenever one of them is being uh, dropped, your price rate is nearly the whole window, okay? And here, because I have a continuation of the data, all the data is coming, so I will retransmit the whole window. Now, let's imagine that I want to send out 10 gigabyte of data out, and my window is one gigabyte. <laughs> that means that every time you may need to retransmit one gigabyte, okay? And you are actually bombarding all the intermediate devices at the same time. So let's say your, your ISP is a great ISP, okay? Can tolerate one gigabyte of first. How about the router in the middle? And the router in the middle is not serving you only, right? It's serving the entire internet. So you set up one gigabyte first, immediately that router think that, oh, you are an attacker, maybe a, uh, you consider this you're doing TDOS, okay? Drop some of it, and the price of play is, you are keep retransmitting. Okay, so this is a very interesting topic to uh, understand later on when we talk about congestion control. Okay, well, we'll try to look into the problem. When I feel that there is a congestion, so I keep the gamma and the n in the same width or reduce it or not. Okay, so this is a very interesting point to take a look. Okay. Now, another point is, uh, you know, we invent go back end because we don't like our ping pong ball scenario, right? The ping pong ball scenario is only one ball flying around, and I still remember the, the data that are, uh, the calculations. After calculations, we know that only 0.027% of the utilization rates, okay, of the network, with the one gigabyte, uh, with one gigabit, not gigabyte, one gigabit uh, channel. Now we still have that one gigabit channel, okay? If we go to boost the thing together using a go back n of n equal to is four, yeah, go back n equal to four. So whether the n factor, I mean, uh, I have n, right, is equal to four. Can I boost the, I mean, boost the whole throughput by four? or more, and it's more, it's great, okay? If it's fewer than four, still okay. But please, don't have, don't make me feel frustrated with a, let's say, uh, only 1% of growth, okay? So let's take a look at the calculations here. If I boost the uh, N to four, so that means that at the same time, I send out four guys. There are four guys. So the four guys will be uh, here because the transmission items is still D trend, is still D trend, but now I said four D trend out at the same time. So the busy period is um, bigger, and at the same time, your your time in, in, in waiting for the next round of sending will also grow. Okay? Now let's take a look after this calculation. This is approximately oh, okay, so I copy I know that you, you think you think that I'm doing some lousy job, okay? So it is a zero point zero zero one zero six six, okay? Divide by okay, so what which which page? Eighty seven. Wow, eighty seven, where are you? Ah, okay. Eighty seven. Divide by zero point zero 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 two seven. Approximately four times of growth. Okay, approximately four times. So that means what? That means, wow, great. Uh, where, where is my break point here? Ah, okay. What is the, about, what is the great point about this, okay? We are really introducing a growth, okay? And growth seems to be, uh, have a linear, linear uh, pop properties with the go back and the end, okay? As n become bigger, your throughput become bigger. Of course, it's uh, subject to a congestion. If there's no congestion, perfect. Let's make n equal to one gigabyte. But you know, there's a congestion. So the, the story is not that easy to tackle, okay? So uh, this protocol is uh, going to be n here, and we have two suggestions in uh, improving the protocol, okay? So let's consider these two suggestions first. 
How about I combine the consecutive ACK segments into one? Yeah, we already have it. We already have it. Okay. So as a matter of fact, TCP will do this. TCP think that ah, oh, why not we set up ten ACK all together? Okay. It will automatically combine it. But in go back end, it do, won't do the automatic combine of all the ACK. But every ACK carry the meaning that it is. I mean, uh, accumulating the effects. Okay. Second example, uh, second uh, not example, second uh, suggestion is how about hey, don't drop the out of all the backhead, right? They are good guys. Okay, they are, they are just coming earlier. Okay, so can I keep them? Now we will go to study what is the price to pay. We have to pay a price if we want to save all the out of all the backheads. Okay, so. The part the price is inside this protocol called selective repeat. The repeating of the loss packet from the center side is selective. So how to do this? How to do this? Okay. So the upgrade is, of course, uh, accepting all the packets on the receiver side. Then the center side have to do something more, and this is the price to pay. Every analog segment has its own timer. Wow. So that means what? That means originally you have one alarm clock. Now you are sending 1,000 packet, you will set up 1,000 alarm clock. This is the price to pay. This is the price. Okay? And another price to pay, we have to defeat our own good thing. What is that? The we transmitting of analog packet, which is not necessarily consecutive. So that means the ACK itself will change a little bit. Okay? So let's take a look at how to do it. Of course, uh, in order to demonstrate how to do it, I will introduce a dropping of a packet. Let's say I do it normally, but I drop number two. Okay? So then I will highlight it as a red in the receiver side. Now, I want this protocol to implement the feature that don't drop this. Keep it in the kernel. Okay, what does it mean of keeping it in the kernel? Because if it is not going to be a consecutive, I should not pop it out to the application layer. Do you understand what it's meaning? If you are, uh, how many of you is writing application, uh, or already writing your academic one? Okay, only, oh shoot. Okay, I consider every has equal to one group. Okay, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, five, or six, okay? Yeah, because there are only six group will stop doing it. Okay. So if you're doing it, okay, can you find any difference if I uh, I compare it this way? I do a read write over a socket. Is it very similar to read write on a file? What is the similarity? They are doing FI4, right? Reading a file is FI4. Reading a socket is FI4. The only difference is that you cannot seek. You cannot seek in the in the network, but you can seek in a file. Okay, so I don't care about the difference. Okay, I care about the similarity. It is coming in FI file. So that means that the application has already had a concept that you give me something in the order that it sends. So if I am a receiver on the transport layer, not the application layer, I'm in a transport layer. And I receive something out of order. Should I do the uh, do the same thing? Uh, yeah, I keep it. So then I need to send the application. No, because the application don't expect that. The application will make an assumption that every time I call the system call, I'm reading the byte stream offset in a sequential way. Understand this point? Very important. Okay. So then the design has to uh, change a little bit. Although I keep the all of all the packet, I mark it as red. Don't pop it up to the application layer in the receiver side. And the bad thing come, what is bad thing come? It will keep coming because I I lost the early packet number two. So I can only deliver number one to the application layer, but the things here should be kept on the kernel. So this is another price to pay. The kernel have to buffer many packets if there is an early packet get lost. Okay? Which is 
the same in a, in a, in a Linux TCP implementation. I look at the kernel core. I said, oh, really, they're doing something like this. And how about the, uh, the ACK? So the ACK seems to be strange. So what is the strange part of it? Because I want to tell the other side that, hey, I want you to uh, tell you that I received a certain number. So I will keep sending a uh, one, and then three, and then four, and then five, up to 10 ACK. Now that's why I said that I will defeat the whole purpose of the ACK number. The ACK number no longer has accumulative effects. Understand this point? I said ACK of 10. I really mean that I receive only 10. I didn't mean I receive packets before 10 as well. Okay? So I defeat a good purpose in order to save all the all of the packets here. Remember this, okay? Because later on in TCP, TCP has a very clever way to combine go back end and selective repeat in one protocol. They try to combine this together. Okay? Or I in Cantonese, is okay, I will say I will describe it this way. Okay. okay you have you have a you have a piece of cloth where there's a hole. I put something on top of it to cover the hole. Okay? For what I'm saying, right? So continue, huh? So we have a price break, uh, bigger kernel space. Uh, here is also defeating the old ACK purpose. Now, how to trigger the sender to compensate for this guy? Of course, by timer. I said that there is a timer for every unknowledge segment. Okay? So the sender side will become harder to implement because you, you keep track every packet that's sent. And only timeouts for this guy, for other guys, you find it as green. Find it as green. I already received acknowledgement, I received acknowledgement. But this guy, I never received acknowledgement from uh, send aside. Then I will have timeout for this guy only and we send it. We transmit it. Okay? Once it's retransmit, so it become a, a, a straight, straight uh, sequence now. Okay? No holes. Then I will mark it as uh, all ready to be uh, delivered in the application layer. So the two up to ten can be go to the application, and I will send the two ACK only to the opposite side. Any questions? So I, there's uh, many points here. First, I defeat the ACK purpose. Second, I save all the um, all the all of all the packets. Third, there is a timer for every packet. Very, very unlike uh, the ACE, uh, the go back end approach. Any questions? No? Good. Then something not good. <laughs> I, in this kind of complex protocol, how can I write state diagram? No, I cannot write state diagram, so I write anything else. Okay? There's a, a whole bunch of anything else, what is anything else? Uh, we don't have, we don't find if and else, right? You find different kind of events, okay? So event driven, uh, that I did not going to say it's that right. Event driven code, okay? So I have event number one data from the application. Event number two, ACK arrives. Event number three is there is a certain time timeout and a certain packet, okay? Now because the timeout is a very description now. The timeout is for one packet, but not for eight other packets. Okay, so here is the easiest way to look at it. That packet timeout, we transmit that guy. Now, how about some application data comes in? Come in, we still maintain a window. Okay, so I can only send the data amount within the window size. Let's say the window size is still ten. Okay, so then I cannot send beyond ten packets. So, what is the hardest part? The hardest part is this guy. I receive an ACK of a number N. Okay? So, because I cannot say anything about the sequence number before N. Okay? So, I can only mark the same 7N as a knowledge, not the thing also before it. Okay? Then I have to stop the timer for that guy and loop through the entire set of uh, packets within the windows, okay? Because I don't know whether the end is just uh, equal to base. If it's equal to base, I can move side the window a bit, okay? 
So this is the, the whole sender code. Now the receiver code. Receiver code, I have a paint block here. You can first ignore it, okay? Let's take a look at what the normal thing that you have to do. The normal thing is, if the n is greater than or equal to expected sequence number, I expect some sequence number to count, okay? And when the data coming in with an n, and the n is also smaller than this, I'm uh, sorry, it's the expected sequence number plus n. So that means we're in a window. Good? We're in a window, then what? Then you have the same acknowledgement. Okay? If it is within the window and it is small enough, how small it is, small enough such that I can move the window, okay, a bit. Then I will move the window a bit. Now, if you understand this, then I will give you a very, very hard to understand concept. What is this else? Uh, tell me what is this else? This is very clear, right? N is bigger than or equal to my expensive sequence number, good. And smaller than my expensive sequence number plus N. So this is a window. What is this? Yeah, give you one minute. What is this? Can you draw a line in your, in your mind? There's a line, okay? Uh, the middle is an N. N, small n, okay? Small n plus big n will be the current window. And here is not plus, it's minus. What is the meaning? What is the meaning? Hmm? ACK what? Look, A C K loss about your class, okay? You're talking about uh, the reason, okay? The reason why we have this block. Okay, but what, what is this this block is describing? Describing some area. Okay? Let's say I have a point, expensive for example. Before I mean not before. Expensive for plus N will be the window that I, I welcome data in. The expensive for example minus N. What is it? The last window. Right? The last window or the previous window. Why we have to leave the piece of code that welcome previous window? Huh? I welcome previous window and not just welcome it, I will react to it. I react to the previous window. Look at here, how to react it. You give me N, okay, data, I give me data N, I will send the sequence number equal to N with, uh, I mean, the ACK. So that means I responded, but other than response, I don't do anything. I'm a receiver, I just uh, receive, uh, but it's uh, before. Now, let's take a look at an illustration, okay? Uh, I can skip this, okay, just a uh, color. It. This is more important, okay, the animation. Huh? So let's say that this is, uh, this cafe already tell me, Okay, I lost something, okay? And it triggered this strange events, okay? And what you should take a look, I mean, take a close look, is the numbers here, okay? The numbers here representing the, my previous spots, okay? I have a sequence number, expanded sequence number, plus N. That means this area, my expanded sequence is one. So plus N will be something that I welcome, Minus n will be this area, but I don't have that many numbers, okay, so that I don't draw it out. Now, I have some packets comes. Let's say I have a sequence number three missing. When I receive these two guys, I will move my window forward, right, because one and two are small numbers. It's allow me to pro proceed by two slots. What I miss is uh, sequence number three. Okay, now this is the worst scenario, why? Because when these two guys come in to the uh, sender, the sender will receive a, a signal, ah, that guy welcome my data. Okay, then let me say more. Now what is the limit size? I set it to be free. So it will eventually reply with two, oh, two more data. I, I was gonna say reply with two more data. I mean, uh, 
the sender will send out two more later, okay? Then when the two more later coming out, what are their status when they receive as on the other uh, receiver side? They will become all of the data, right? Because you miss no frame. So I will give a special color here, red. Okay. So if you if you want to know the color key, okay, you can go back two more slides. Okay, the color key. Okay, the red guy is an out order. Now can I move the window? I cannot. I cannot move my window because I still miss free in order to move my window forward. But here, January async. I don't know. I should call it async. Okay. Later on, when when something arrive, okay. It will try to move the window. So I generate a special case. What is the special case here? I or originally these two guys will receive it. I say that they are lost. Then let's see what will happen. So the seven number three will have its own timer. So this timer will be triggered earlier. Then the four and the five, right? Because four and the five are sending later. Remember, every now every packet has its own timer. So this timer will be triggered first, and then we transmit se uh, sequence number three. And when it arrives, good. I move forward. Now the funny thing is, when I move forward, I will find four and five. Now four and five originally is out of order. It's no longer out of order. So. Move again. Move again. So there is an asynchronous scenario now. The sender think that think that I should only send three, four, five. But in the sender, the sender already know that three, four, five is already received by the application and I already deliver three, four, five. Okay. Now what? Why I say this funny? Because what whatever. The sender try to send, let's say, which transmission, which transmits of three, four, five. In here, this is a past history already. It's a past history already. And look at the comparison here. Whenever this guy wants to be transmit, it will only be transmit three, four, five because it's inside this window. And it's just speak to what I have just said. I'm carrying. I'm looking at with expanded sequence number. Especially the minus n will be this area. Okay? So then the story goes on. It so happened that these two guys really uh, have, a, have a timer for themselves and they go off with transmission being triggered. And I said that whenever we transmit trigger, it's always within this window. And this window so happened to be the previous window of the receiver now. What will happen? It will hit this area, and whenever it hit this area, should you give any response? Let's imagine. I don't give any response. What will happen then? What will happen if I don't have any response? Oh, I don't want you to follow. <laughs> okay. What will happen? You hit into my previous window. Okay, that window I should ignore you. Why? Because I already delivered everything into the application. It's none of the business anymore. But you keep retransmitting data to me. Okay? If I don't reply, then what will happen? It will have a very bad scenario, not just an endless retransmission. Not just endless retransmission. But the sender window cannot move on. Then what will happen if the sender window cannot move on? I cannot receive new data anymore. It's being jailed here. I cannot send new data to you. Okay? So in order to keep the this side the window sliding, whenever you hit my own window, that means some really bad things going on. I I send out some error when you cannot receive it. So I have to compensate for it if you hit this area. Okay? So here okay will be necessary and it's very important in order to keep the whole flow flowing okay flow is a flow of data okay keep it flowing 
Any questions? Uh, how do you know that uh, the, the, uh, the offset of, uh, of the sender window and the uh, receiver window will be 10? Oh, 8 is an agree, agree uh, number. Both sides have to agree on the same end. Uh, why, why, why do you know that the offset, the maximum value of the offset will be 8? Maximum value of the offset. What is the meaning of maximum value of the offset? The difference. What is the difference? Yeah, let's go on, go on. Yeah, let's go on, go on. Okay, I understand his question. So his question is, this with transmission window, okay, will we, uh, include one and two? Right, this is your question. No. Why you will include one and two? Yeah, you can get that's why I said also. Ah, oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it won't happen. Why it won't happen? This is kind of a cooperation. It's kind of cooperation. You have a chance to move on because I receive your ACK. Then I use my data, I use my data to cause your window to move on. Okay? If I don't receive your data, I cannot uh, the sender uh, the sender don't send any data, then the receiver cannot move his window. Yeah. So there's a, I mean, a causality, okay? There's a core, there's reason and there's a result. Any questions? Yeah. Why I keep on emphasizing this? Because this is very important. How important it is. When it scale up the whole thing, when it scale up the whole thing, it will become something really important. Let's say I implement this, uh, I mean, uh, this protocol. Okay, and an implement protocol using the end as a unsigned end, four bytes, unsigned end, four bytes. So then I will have a whole range of number like this from zero to x zero f. Okay, and it is really implemented in an in an all TCP protocol around the world. So whether you are using the TCP on Mac, the TCP on Windows, or TCP on uh, Linux, they are all using the four bytes. Now the problem comes. The problem comes. We have the analysis here that a sequence number, you have to find ways to represent your previous window as well as your, your current window. Then my question is, if you listen carefully enough, that means that this if we map it to a real scenario, the end cannot be chosen at random. I cannot have a huge end. I cannot have a huge end. So give you a preview. If you have a whole huge end, then we will, let's say this is a huge end, the transmission window is step back. Then the previous window and the current window will overlap. Understand what I mean? Let's say the, the the window is a uh, unsigned in, okay, to the power to the power thirty one, okay, it's half, okay. I should use to the power thirty one. Let's say there's two bits, okay, two bits is four, okay. Let's say my window is three, okay. Definitely there will be overlapping, and if it's generate overlapping scenario, what will happen? Yeah, this is our concern. What will happen? Very beautiful, okay? So what is the beautiful stuff? Let's say I have a sequence number range, only a range from one to four, okay? Where I have one, and it become two, become three, become four, and four plus one will overflow, become one again. Let's say it's this way, okay? And I don't obey what I have just seen I see is that I need to preserve this previous window as well as my current window. So as if telling me that I cannot go beyond half of my window size. Now I don't obey this rule. I choose n equal to three. More than half. More than half. So what will happen if the window size is more than half? 
Very funny. I set up three guys. Good. Three guys flying. I choose all three guys being dropped. Three guys drop. So what will happen? This three guys will, will have a retransmission, right? But look at here. Look at here. Because the window is slides, okay? It's slides by three slots. It will expect four, one, and two. And why is four, one, and two? Because the physical limit of the sequence number. The sequence number has a physical, physical limit. I only editing four number. So after four, it become one. Ah, then you will you will know what is going on now. When this guy which was me. <laughs> so what is one? Should it be previous window or my current window? No one knows. No one's just enter a confusion area. How confusion is this? I mean, you cannot go on from total protocol crash. Okay? Unless you don't have any anything which was made, then it's okay. Once you have a transmission, oh, whether it's previous window or current window, huh? So the rule is, the rule is don't let the two, the, the previous window and the current window overlaps. Not to overlap, that means that you can only have half of your physical limit of the number that you use to represent a sequence number. Okay? And this is half, so that you don't overlap. So let's see what if I really use half and repeat what have happened before. I send the things, I lost all the ACK, and here the windows already move. Now when the replies comes, it will just fit in the previous window. It won't look ahead and say that, ah, is it, is it because of something that I, I expect to be coming? No. Very clear, this is retransmission. And it hits inside the previous window. What should you do? Compensate with ACK, but not getting in a confusion state. Okay, so this is really implemented in a, in a TCP. TCP sequence number go, won't go beyond 2 to the power 31. Okay, if it's go beyond 2 to the power 31, we will have big trouble. Okay, and now we go to a summary. Wow, cool, cool, very, very accurate. Okay, so the, the summary is that uh, we have evolution, we have a ping pong ball uh, protocol with this four uh, pretending to be a UDP. And then handling the uh, corruption with a negative ACK. Then we think that negative ACK is a bad guy, so we move it by introducing sequence number. 3.0 is the best for ping pong ball style. Then what's next? We have a go back end. Go back end is good in the sense that uh, if you have a good throughput, the, the penalty is small. We don't need to implement a, uh, I mean, the penalty is so small. I mean, the penalty is only one thing, okay? Before we talk about penalty, let's see uh, the, uh, the timer. The timer is good, okay? Only one timer. How about the, the, the um, ACK status? The ACK has a cumulative effect, very good. Now, the only penalty is one. When you lost something, you have to retransmit nearly the entire window. Very bad. Selective repeat, I will say that it never exists. Never being implemented. But some of the features that we have just seen is really implemented in the real TCP. Why is it not implemented? Because the drawback is too big. I cannot afford every packet has a timer. This is a very technical reason. So in the next lecture, we will go to how TCP be implemented how it can uh, integrate the go back end features and the selective repeat features together in the same protocol. Okay? Of, of course, I will also talk about several things like, uh, let's say, going to, uh, going to student, close to the end of the, of the chapter. I will talk about how can we relate the system call with some control message of the TCP. Uh, protocol. Okay, TCP has some control message, and that control message has a high relationship with the code that you use in your assignment. Okay, so in the uh, next week, we will I will try to finish this set of slides within that within next week. Okay, then we will start another 
section talking about flow control as well as congestion control uh, before the Chinese New Year. Okay? So, see you guys.